One of the ironies of Brexit is the number of British employers who've lobbied the government for special consideration when it comes to allowing migrant workers to come into the UK. Now, it's reasonable to say that the Brexit vote six years ago was one where the public expressed their democratic right to dissent and wasn't necessarily the view of the government or British business. Whether Britain suffers from a skills shortage or not is debatable. The number of foreign-born or contracted staff in the NHS reflects a long-term commitment to bring in people from the new Commonwealth to help staff the service over many, many years, going back to the early 1960s. So having a cosmopolitan workforce in the NHS is not so much of an issue. But more generally in Britain at present, with unemployment at running around about 3.5% and about 600,000 discouraged older workers who have basically left the labour market after the Covid pandemic, there is a real worry that there is an inappropriate mix of skills within Britain. Now that presents a problem when we have refugees and those purporting to be refugees coming to this country. And as with a number of nations, this becomes an enormously polarising topic. It's unfortunate, shall we say politely unfortunate, that the current Home Secretary used the term invasion for those people coming across illegally to England via boats. The statement that there are economic migrants amongst those seeking refugee status is almost certainly correct, but it's going to be a small proportion of the total. If you think about what has happened in the past 10 years, with the Arab Spring, what has happened particularly in Syria, the war in Ukraine now, Afghanistan, there are large numbers of displaced people who do have an affinity or an association with the West. Now, I don't want to suggest it's reaching a point of xenophobia, but stopping people from overseas coming in to the United Kingdom made a contribution to the Brexit vote wasn't necessarily the main reason, certainly wasn't the only reason, but there is still the fear of the other. And when you have the Home Secretary talking about those wishing to come to this country as representing an invasion, you can understand why it becomes a right-wing trope to garner support. Now, Several decades ago, The Economist magazine ran a piece which said if Europeans, and they were including Great Britain at the time, if Europeans want to maintain their standard of living, then actually accepting the displaced people from wars around the world, the refugees and asylum seekers, is in their best long-term interests. The population of the planet has just reached 8 billion people. That's a UN estimate just at this point in time. Yet, in the West, birth rates are declining. And in Japan, an ageing population has been a prominent problem behind their stagnating economic growth for now nearly 
two decades. So allowing displaced people, however you want to define displaced, into this country is not the worst thing that can happen. It's portrayed as if they want to come to Britain. More people seek refugee status in Germany and France than they do in this country. The illegality of entry, and particularly those who are associated with um, shipping people into this country illegally is to be deplored and stopped. But more practically, Britain could do itself a big favour, particularly if it's focusing on skills entering this country to take a greater proportion of the world's displaced peoples with relatively low unemployment and high inflation, you don't want to undermine wages, but you do want to make sure that you get the right people coming in that help. And perhaps talk of invasion is not the right way to do that.